parents, just a quick note. If you want to turn today's story time episode into a homeschooling English language arts lesson, look in the description box below and there will be a link to printable PDF worksheets. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to another episode of Authorized. I am your hostess, Christina Nicole Smith. And before we get to today's story time book, I'd like to ask you one really quick favor. If you are liking these story time videos, please remember to make sure to hit that like button. Okay, and now let's go. Today's story time book is Wonder Horse, the true story of the world's smartest horse by Emily Arnold McCulley. Bill Key was born in Murfreesboro, Tennessee in 1833. Even as a little boy, he had a special way with animals. He could soothe and he could cure just about any creature. After Bill grew up, he became a veterinarian. He was called Doc Key. Most of his patients were horses. In those days, horses did the hauling, pulling, and carrying, and they were often abused. Few people realized that animals had feelings. Bill believed in treating every animal with kindness. Put down your whip, he would say to a farmer trying to get his horse to move. Bill stroked the spot on the animal's neck where its mother had once nuzzled. All creatures like kindness, Bill advised. His methods worked. His reputation spread. Doc created a medicine called Keystone Liniment. It worked on colic, lameness, cramps, and headache in both humans and animals. His liniment made him rich. Doc bought a hotel and a restaurant. After he bought a racetrack, he wanted to own the fastest horse in the country. One day he heard that a circus was selling its animals. Doc went to see if a racer was among them. He noticed a beautiful mare with a distinctive profile. An Arabian, Doc thought. Arabians were known for speed and intelligence, but she looked frightened. There were marks on her flanks where she had been whipped. Doc bought her for $40. Doc loved his new horse, Loretta. She was the smartest horse he'd ever known. He found a champion stallion to father her foal. Then he waited for his future champion to be born. But the new foal had twisted legs and a mottled, homely coat. Doc thought the foal was too weak to survive, so he called him plain old Jim Key. Worse, the birth used up Loretta's strength. Doc tried desperately to save her, but Loretta died. Doc's heart closed shut with grief. No one could console him, not even his dogs who waited for Doc to throw a stick for them to fetch. Meanwhile, little Jim Key tried desperately to stand on his crooked legs. His bright black eyes begged Doc not to lose hope in him. One day, Doc felt a nudge on his shoulder. It was Jim Key with a stick in his mouth. You want to play fetch? Doc smiled for the first time in weeks. He threw the stick and Jim stumbled after it. The foal had never taken more than two steps. Jim picked up the stick and tottered back. He trotted a few feet. Offering the stick, he spread his lips in a grin. You're trying to cheer me up, aren't you? Doc asked. After Doc and the dogs went inside his house, he heard loud knocking on the front door. It was Jim. Okay, Jim, you win, Doc said. He made Jim a bed on the floor of the spare room. The colt slept there every night until he was too big for the doorways and too heavy for the floorboards. Then Doc took his own bed out to the barn. Almost everything Doc did, Jim tried to do too. Jim figured out how to unlock the paddock gate. He opened the drawer where Doc kept apples, ate them all, and then shut the drawer. When Doc laughed at his antics, Jim seemed to <laughs> laugh too. 
<laughs> I wonder what else you could learn, Doc said. <laughs> Jim lifted his chin as if to say, try me. Doc decided to take time off from selling liniment. Doc taught Jim one lesson at a time, repeating it and rewarding Jim with apples or sugar. First, Doc wrote the letter A on a card. He said A aloud, then put the card in Jim's lips, held them shut, and patted his neck. It took many months, but Doc never lost patience. Finally, when Doc asked Jim to fetch the letter A, Jim did it. They proceeded to B, then to C, until Jim knew the whole alphabet. In the following years, Jim learned to count and to pick out the primary colors. One day, watching Jim add and subtract, Doc cried, Jim, we should go on the road. People will be amazed by how much you know. They will see that animals have feelings and it's wrong to make them suffer. Wonder if Jim can do that in front of strangers, one of Doc's farm hands said. Might just be sensing what you want him to do, not learning at all. Doc knew that Jim had truly been educated. He arranged for a show to prove it. At first, audiences couldn't believe their eyes, but soon they were gasping and cheering. Jim Key loved being the star of the show. The bigger the audience, the more he hammed it up. Jim spelled, made change from a cash register, danced to music and bowed to ladies in the audience, flicking his tail and grinning. Jim and Doc traveled to fairs, small town theaters, and big city arenas. But one day, Doc saw a newspaper headline. Is horse's intelligence a fraud? The story asked. How could a little old black man with no education teach a dumb animal to do these things? Hmm. The next day, there were hecklers in the audience. This is all a trick, one shouted. <laughs> Some people are offended by your brain power, Doc said to Jim, but children believe in you. Doc asked the local board of education to close the schools for a day so that every child in town could come to the show. The board replied, we can't close our schools for horse shows or monkey shows. The insult made Doc, the insult made Doc more determined. Jim, we have to find a sponsor. We can't fight prejudice all by ourselves. Doc wrote to the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Let us team up. Jim can help spread your message. What if your act is a hoax? They wrote back. People already call us foolish for teaching kindness to animals. Doc invited them to come see for themselves and they agreed, as long as the demonstration was secret. The big day arrived. Doc and Jim waited and waited, but no one showed up. Doc said, I have another idea. Doc invited a team of professors from Harvard University to examine Jim Key and decide if he was really educated. The professors agreed. You must wait outside while we examine Jim, they told Doc. They led Jim inside and shut the door. Doc waited patiently. A crowd gathered. Hours later, the door opened. The professors announced their findings. It is not a hoax. Jim answered all of our questions. He can read, spell, do arithmetic, and identify colors entirely as a result of his education. Every newspaper carried the story. Jim Key educated by kindness. The Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals agreed to sponsor Jim Key's performances. After the shows, thousands of school children signed a pledge that said, I promise to treat animals with kindness. For nine years, Doc and Jim Key traveled the country in a custom railroad car, delighting audiences of all kinds. Then they retired to a peaceful life on Jim Key Farm where enthusiastic fans visited, and Jim was always happy to amaze them with what he knew. The end. Okay, and now I have some questions, as I always do. So, what did you think about uh, Jim Key, the Wonder Horse? Did you know that horses could do all these 
things. Hmm. Pretty interesting, huh? And is this your first time hearing about Jim Key? I know when I read this book, it was my first time. Is this your first time hearing about Jim Key, the Wonder Horse? <laughs> and is this your first time hearing about how important it is to be kind to animals? Is this something that you just felt like, well, yes, that makes sense to do that, but is this did you realize that this was actually something that needed to be taught? Like people really didn't know that this was important to be kind to animals. Did you know that? This was an issue in history? Hmm. I didn't know that either. <laughs> I mean, just for me, I didn't know that. So I learned something new. I just thought that was kind of like a given. So that's my answer. But you, uh, you know, write down what yours is. Hmm, here's some other questions. Let me see. So, hmm, I guess that's all the questions I have, but I do have one last question. What do you think the moral of the story was? I think I know, but I'm going to let you answer that. And I'll see you next time on Authorized.